Herzlich willkommen zum 37. DocFest München. A very warm welcome to the 37th DocFest Munich. My name is Daniel Lang and I'm going to be your host for this talk um, today. After two years of our online program, we are very, very happy to be, have a dual festival this year, so at the cinema and at home. Um, and from May 9th, you can watch most of the films online. Today, I am talking to the director, Kuba Mikura, about his film, Escape to the Silver Globe. Um, it's a film running in our section, Best of Fests, and it's the German premiere of the film. Hello, Kuba. Hello, Daniel. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us. Um, can you remember the first time that you saw on the Silver Globe? Well, I... When it comes to the film itself, uh, it was quite quite late. I, quite late, I, I have to say. Um, it was when I was in my late twenties, I guess. Although I remember quite well uh, for when I was nine years old, uh, so it was around 1990, 1989, uh, when I saw the cover for a Polish science fiction magazine, uh, Fantastica. And it was a, a steal from on the Silver Globe. And, and for some reason, you know, this image stayed with me for many years. I mean, I, I, I remember this kind of um, very ambiguous reaction towards it because I, you know, I, I had uh, seen all science fiction films in the, for, in the 80s, basically. It was the time when, for, for, you know, we had this like VHS marathons, you know, Back to the Future, Star Wars, E.T., Alien, you know, everything, basically. The 80s was a great time for science fiction, obviously. Uh, but this, I mean, it was something so different, you know, from a, something so, um, so uh, disturbing, I have to say, uh, for, that I couldn't, you know, I, 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 could, I couldn't understand it. I had no idea about Zhuravsky back then, uh, for, mm, but I felt that um, I felt that, 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 that it was something completely different. And many years later, I learned about the legend about the film, you know, the, the, the story around the film and how it was f f stopped. Uh, f and then I put the dots together and I realized, oh, it's, so that was this, that was Zhuavsky, that was on the Silver Globe. Uh, f so basically, f basically, uh, f mm, only years later, I, I realized like what the story behind it was, uh, f and uh, f it might sound ironic, uh, but I'm not a huge fan of on the Silver Globe, you know, itself. Uh, f mm, uh, it's a very difficult uh, challenge to f f to watch, uh, f not only because f it's unfinished, but uh, f yeah, the structure of the film. Well, first thing to say is that it's a film by Andrzej Żuławski and uh, for everything by Andrzej Żuławski is nothing else but a film by Andrzej Żuławski. So for, for you, you can tell from the very first, I mean, not the very first frame, but the first minutes of the film that this is this kind of a film and, and it's a very different film beast. Um, uh, and, and here, I mean, uh, for Żuławski from the very beginning of uh, uh, planned a very, uh, for, um, elliptic structure of, of, of narrative. So it's, it's, it's quite a challenge to, for, to, go, for, to go through it. What I love about it are the images. Uh, for, and the images, uh, particular scenes of uh, um, framing, of uh, camera movement, I think it's, it's like nothing else I have seen in cinema ever, basically. So for here I had the great pleasure because I didn't have to, you know, uh, if, if, to, 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 if, I didn't have to uh, like go through the entire film, but I could if, use the images I love the most mm -hmm. and put it in my film. Mm -hmm. And what made you uh, like? What made you want to make this film? What 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 what, did, what made you want to delve into um, this director's world? You know, I mean, the, the the story behind it. I mean, it's it's quite. When you when you have this kind of film uh, radar or like film like the nose, you know, you, you can tell that there is a great film somewhere, right? And and here you had this very strong character, very charismatic character of Jan Żuławski, uh, for, uh, for, uh, who was 
uh, at that time in Poland, uh, he was like an alien himself, mm -hmm. right? He was like the man who fell to Warsaw, you know, like the man who fell to Earth, basically from Paris. Uh, for, so you have a great kind of conflict on, on, for, on the very basic sort of level, right? Because he's so different from the, the, the circumstances, from the, from the world around him at that time. Yeah. Then uh, for, you obviously have this kind of unimaginable project of, of having a science fiction film, uh, some kind of strange uh, toxic space opera made in like the mid 70s Poland, like communist Poland, right? I mean, it couldn't be different again, like from, from, um, uh, from, the, from the world around it. And I, I, I felt from the very beginning that one of the most important thing to do would be to show the circumstances again, because only uh, for, towards this background, uh, of mid, mid uh, 1970s communist Poland, you can tell uh, for how original it was, right? And how kind of crazy idea uh, for, to produce this uh, for, at, that, for, at that time. And then obviously you have all these conflicts and, you know, film and filmmakers love these conflicts. Like you have the conflict between like, obviously this kind of proverbial archetypical conflict between authoritarian state and, uh, and an artist, right? Uh, who wants to, for, have his artistic freedom and to, to for, for make his artistic vision come true. Um, you have a conflict between lovers because there is uh, the story of Zhuavsky's marriage that for, for fell apart shortly before he started working on the film. Uh, you have a conflict between Zhuavsky and his crew because obviously like his crew was very devoted to him and uh, for people were um, under his spell for a very long, long time, although you know the shooting took like ten months or twelve months, so obviously like the tension started to uh, for, to grow. Uh, for, and finally, you have a, a conflict between for Zhuavsky and Vaida, so like a two towering figures of Polish cinema. For, um, one could say that they are so different, but at the same time, um, for Zhuavsky at that time. Uh, was uh, for, um, hailed as for Vida's successor, like the ne next Vida, like Vida's son almost. So you have this, again, like father-son kind of dynamics between Vida, for Vida and Zulawski. So you have a lot, you have a lot to, to put in the film. So I, I found the dynamics uh, like quite interesting between Vida and Zulawski um, and also his, his real son. Yeah. So you have mm -hmm. like this, um, this weird kind of um, filmic family in a way. Was yeah, it? I, 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 at, the, at, at the beginning, I, you know, I, I, I had no idea that it would become a film about fathers and sons. Mm -hmm. I thought, for, you know, my background is in cinema, like studies and uh, for, uh, more scholarly than emotional. And for, so I felt uh, safest when I, I thought about some kind of essay film about the production of the Silver, Silver Globe, but very soon in the project, I realized that emotions um, that are uh, uh, still very much alive, uh, emotions concerning that film, uh, both on the side of the crew, uh, for, uh, but also, also like, for, for, as we mentioned, this kind of strange father-son relationship that is there in the background. Uh, for, I realized I have to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and, and talk about it and, and to show it because it would be such a waste, you know, if I, as, as I planned at the beginning, that I will use only archival materials and uh, for, uh, every interview will be just uh, an off-screen interview. Uh, for, but then when I was talking to them, I realized like in these spaces, you, you can see so much, you know, uh, and it was a surprise because I thought that after almost more than 40 years, you know, it's more than 40 years, I thought that it would be very much of a word, word through, you know, that they, that they, they moved, moved, uh, moved forward. But no, I mean, it's, it's, it was for, for uh, quite a few of our speakers, it was the first time they talked about it publicly. And you could say that, you know, that they had this urge to speak about it, you know, to, to, to speak about it maybe for the very first very first time in such circumstances. Um, Jawaski's son plays a part in these interviews. Was it difficult to convince him to also um, talk in front of the camera? 
No, no, not at all. And, and uh, because I, I, I've known Xaveri for some time, and we've been worked together on, uh, for, at a, for, on, on a project some time ago. And I remember uh, already at that time, so seven years ago, uh, I was already very much touched by his relationship towards his father. That that you know that uh, uh, it's very ambiguous. It's uh, uh, it's very difficult. Um, he clearly loved his father, but I mean, his father was a very difficult figure to be loved, you know, and, and I thought that uh, if we can somehow channel this, if you can somehow show this on the screen, that would be, that would be, uh, that would be great. And um, a couple of years ago, Xaveri made uh, a film based on one of the last scripts of Andrzej. It was called The Bird Talk. Uh, and already then, uh, for, in the interviews uh, for, around the film, um, he was very open about his relationship with his father. So I knew that uh, for, I can count on him because he already said it. Uh, for, although I have to say that for, I put my camera much closer than anyone else, and I felt that that you know that for, suddenly it was it was it was much more intimate than anything I have heard, seen, or read by Xaveri about, about, about his father. And I, and I guess it was because of the setting to a certain extent, because he didn't say anything that, uh, that new to me. But at the same time, again, I mean, being so much uh, close to him and seeing his, again, uh, I hope it, it, it transpires in the film, uh, this ambiguity again, that he says something, but you can say that his face or his body language uh, uh, tells a different story. Like Poland with its, with its like huge um, and important treasure of film history, um, um, like the films that, that are mentioned in your film or the, or the, the, the excerpts that you show, I don't know, Man of Marble, for example, yeah. um, or, or Christina Janda, who who's like, who I'm, as a film student, I fell in love with her the first time yeah, I saw course, her on screen, like every <laughs> film student. Um, like, there is like a, how do you think, there's a lot of weight, in a way. How did the, how did the, the modern day audience um, see your film when they watched it? Like the Polish modern day audience? Because yeah, 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 the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the films, they are so important for, Polish film history, but also Polish history. Like everyone has seen these films of a certain generation. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I, I was quite surprised that the reception was very enthusiastic. And, and, and I have talked about this film after so many screenings and uh, the, these conversations were very different uh, for, for, from one another. And uh, which I think it's uh, one of the best possible outcomes you can wish for, basically. And I hope that uh, we, or uh, when I say we, I mean my, my editors and me, um, we really wanted to keep this story kind of open uh, for as far as you can keep it open and not to uh, judge anything, not to for suggest anything for, too directly. So then the audience will have their say, right? For, um, and I uh, will stop here not to spoil anything about the, the, the finale or anything. But, but basically, I mean, um, uh, what I always wanted to do was to take, you know, of, uh, this, as you said, this, this heavyweight films, uh, to take them, uh, to, um, so to say, uh, down from their postuments in a way and to work with them, to put them to work in a way. Uh, because I, I, I do believe and I do feel that they are important, but I think that they, they have still very much to say to us, although you need to help them uh, for, in your editing process, for example. And, uh, for, and uh, our uh, producer uh, helped us because it was quite a difficult task sometimes, you know, to, to get the copyrights or uh, for, that I can play with them quite freely. Um, and for example, to make them comment uh, for, um, um, each other in a way. And, and for example, that Men of, Men of Marble kind of uh, element of, uh, was again one of these great surprises when you realize that actually it tells a very similar story to On the Silver Globe, right? And Christina Yanda herself, 
who uh, also played uh, in On the Silver Globe, and she traveled from one set to another, although she has a, a kind of f- f- cameo appearance or something like this there, but she's in the film. Um, so she traveled, to, there were days when she traveled from Vida set to Zhuavsky set and back, for example, right? So, because they really shoot these films at the same time. I mean, Vida was shooting Men of Marble in Krakow and Zhuavsky was shooting on the Silver Grove on the, on the coast. Of, on, on the Baltic coast. So again, this kind of, you know, strange uh, um, mashups that suddenly suddenly emerge. And, and, and obviously, again, I won't spoil it, but the, um, Men of Marble uh, had its impact on the fate of On the Silver Globe, right? For, which was quite, I, I didn't realize it at, at, at the time when I was, I, I was, I was writing the film. Uh, for only only after you know when I for, for when I researched the, the the subject I realized that yes I mean it was a sequence of events obviously but uh, for, but yes uh, Men of Marvel you know, for, had had an impact on on the decision of of uh, Polish Minister of Culture. Mm-hmm. Um, like two aspects that you've just sort of talked about a little bit about the writing and the editing. Maybe you can elaborate a bit more on that because the film mm-hmm. is quite complex. Um, did, you, did you write it first and then edit it? Did you yeah. write and edit <coughs> at the same time? How, were you, how was the working process? Yeah, it is interesting because to, to get money from Polish Film Institute, you need to write the film. You need to write a documentary, which obviously in, in, in this particular case, it's not that difficult because it's a historical documentary to a certain extent. So, you know, at least the story you want to say. Uh, for, but sometimes when you have like this kind of modern day documentary, it's kind of absurd. Uh, for, but yes, I, I, I did write it. Um, I tried to imagine it uh, for the best I could at that time and to put as much details as, as, as I wanted um, to have in the film. Um, you know, uh, from the very beginning, I, I had in mind a short um, comment by Zhuavsky uh, about On the Silver Globe of, uh, that I quote at the very beginning of my film, that for Zhuavsky On the Silver Globe was, uh, um, was four stories in one, in a way. It was like the story of, uh, that is contained in the film On the Silver Globe, but it's also a story uh, uh, about this film, a story about uh, a particular person and um, particular time and place, right? So I already knew that, uh, yes, this is a good direction to follow. Uh, for this four kind of um, aspects or layers, uh, narrative layers, and and uh, you know to be as practical as possible, I had uh, for a spreadsheet with four columns, you know, on the Silver Globe uh, for itself, uh, around on the Silver Globe, Zhuavsky's life, and um, Poland in the 1970s, and I sort of tried to see what the connections uh, were, and and then to uh, design the. Yeah, the plotting, because obviously it's sort of kind of uh, um, um, parallel narratives uh, for, that I tried to kind of juggle in the film. Uh, for, it was m- most difficult, but uh, for, it was already solved uh, on the page to, to, to a certain extent. The, the, the script was longer. Uh, it was more complex, uh, for, particularly the, um, the context of uh, 1970s Poland was, 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 uh, it was m- much more detailed. Um, and we dropped it in the editing because we felt that it's too much detail and maybe not that interesting for international and even young Polish audience, you know, that, uh, that, that uh, I mean, this is, this is, sometimes it felt like a history lesson or something, so we felt, all right, we don't need it. But then, obviously, the editing started. Um, and it was a l- long process, and I worked with two editors, two great editors, Isa Payong and Laura Pavela, and they are very different from one another because Isa is very emotional uh, for, and she's very much uh, oriented towards the story and she was great to sort of uh, design the, the fundamentals, the emotional sort of fundament of the, for, of the film, uh, for, like the personal story and the relationship between Zhuavsky and his uh, wife Małgorzata Braunek and Zhuavsky's kind of emotions at the end of the process. I mean, it was, it was great to work with Isa because Isa is also, she's not a film buff. So she would stop me, you know, at, at some points and she would say, no, no, no one cares about what lenses they use, you know, and I know you need to put these lenses in and it was so original. 
She said like, no, 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 no one will be prepared. Uh, for, so, so basically we had these discussions for, for, from, time, from, from time to time and I have to say she was right. I mean, to, you know, to, to, uh, for, to invest as much as we could in this emotional kind of um, uh, for thread. And then Laura, who's a well-known visual artist herself, and she came with this kind of visual sensitivity that uh, would help us uh, make all these visual connections between between the elements. Because you know, I always love this kind of video essays by Kevin Billy, for example, Catherine Grant, we've all seen this, right? Uh, or Kogonada, for example, for when they play with images and with they, they play with similarities and they try to sort of unpack the style of a filmmaker by quoting things from his uh, for, um, from his films and to show like what what uh, what, what comes in every film, uh, what surfaces in every film. So I always wanted to to have this. Although you know the difference is uh, that when you make a documentary, you need to have copyrights for all this. You cannot just make a video essay, right? So, but here the situation was quite comfortable for us since uh, our co-producer was the copyright owner. So in a way we could say, yeah, we want another two minutes and it's fine. It was it was more difficult with uh, um, uh, French films. Um, like uh, de Mer. I mean, it was very difficult to get this fragments and, and, and we even thought that we, we, we wouldn't manage at, at the at various stage, but with the Polish films, it is totally, totally comfortable. Uh, for, so we focused with Laura, Laura, you know, to make it as much kind of organic and uh, for kind of dense, mm -hmm. visually dense as possible. It was a process, but I, it, it, was, it, was, it was prolonged by the pandemic we could end it a year earlier, I guess, and uh, the editing took almost two years. But but you know, it worked for the benefit of the film. I I, I think. Yeah, I think it's, it works beautifully. I think. Uh, um, Kuba, thank you very very much for the talk. I'm afraid thank our time is up. Um, thank you, Daniel. And thank you for this fantastic film. Um, um, Escape to the Silver, Glo Silver Globe is nominated for the Kino Kino Audience Award, sponsored by Dreisat and BR. And if you like it, please vote for it. Yes, um, please do. Listen to the director. <laughs> um, Kuba, thank you. And hopefully next time, see you in Munich with your new film. Yes, hopefully. Thank you, Daniel. Bye-bye. Have a great festival. Thank you.